folks. Grab a seat and pour your drink neat as Whiskers and Whiskeys present Tales of the Trophies, the Big Ten's greatest rivalries. We're back. It's Mike. And it's with me as always. ZJ. EJ, how's it going, buddy? Hello, everyone. It is going. It's going great. 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 Fantastic. Have you be back here for our second installment after talking about uh, the little brown jug last time and one of the smuggest, smuggest individuals of all time. Uh, please, you know, if you haven't, check out that episode. Uh, check out our Instagram at Whiskers. That's W H I S K E R S, period, Whiskies, W H I S K E Y S on Instagram. Check that out. We got all the pictures that we referenced last time. Including that smug bastard holding the trophy from or holding the, the well, I guess the trophy holding the jug from Minnesota. Um, so you can see how how smug and smarmy, smarmy, I think that's a good word. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a great word. Great word. Yeah, that's a that's a five dollar word right there. All right. Well, uh, this this week's episode, we are going to talk about one of the most, I feel, in my opinion, underrated trophies, the old oaken. Bucket. Woo! And this is still uh, coming preseason type of schedule here. Well, I guess we're right now we're we're, uh, we're in the in the in the midst of the uh, of the college football season getting ready for kickoff here. Uh, but this is another game that's that's not being played this season, right? Uh, it actually, um, it is. Oh, it is. It is. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this this trophy, uh, which I guess we haven't said yet, is between. The, the winner gets the trophy between the Indiana Hoosiers and the Purdue Boilermakers. I love it. This is, this is a battle of the Hoosier state. And that that's a rivalry that I feel like I've heard a little bit more about because, like, some folks I follow, like, you know, Joey, Mo, Joey Molinaro and, like, Pat McAfee and those guys, like, they're based out of Indy. So, like, I hear about Indiana and Purdue a little bit more because I follow them. But, like, before that, I really – like other than the movie Hoosiers, like the, I don't really pay much attention to either of those schools. No, I, I think this is uh this is a rivalry that goes under the radar uh, and a trophy that goes under the radar because um, for the most part, you, you know, the last few decades, uh, neither team has been very good. Right. Um, so, well, it, uh, Indiana last Indiana Penn state last year, right. That game was electric what an ending it yes. was indiana coming from behind and then winning like that this like the the qb just i forget his name do you remember the the qb the indiana yeah, QB? penix jr the penix yeah yes. just stretching out for that t- score at the end like yes. holy cow yes indiana has turned it around obviously rondale moore uh who was at purdue uh brought some electricity yeah. to yeah. the programs yeah. uh respectively um was it tom allen i think it's tom allen uh, yes tom allen coach. not tim allen yes. not the tool man. and not oh, tony oh, allen oh, oh, oh. not tony allen um has has brought oh, this allen. a little bit has brought this a little bit back um you know into uh you know the national eye as we say so so let's uh let's start with uh, some fun facts again. Is that so? Oh, actually, you oh. know what? We we have to discuss what are we drinking today? Oh yeah. Well, we we just we set up another Godfather again. You know, if uh, it's not broke, don't fix it, baby. So, uh, cheers. Cheers, man. To you, my friend. All right. Well, let's uh let's let's get into some fun facts and and here um, what's 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 in a name, Mike? What is <laughs> what is in a name? What's in a name? So the the name of this trophy refers to a sentimental poem oh. written in 1817 wow, okay. by a successful printer and publisher, Samuel Woodworth. So let me, uh, let me read you this poem. All right, lay it on me. All right. How dear to this heart are the scenes of my childhood when fond recollection presents them to view. The orchard, the meadow, the deep tangled wildwood and every love spot which my infancy knew and in the rude bucket that hung in the well, the old oaken bucket, the iron bound bucket, the moss covered bucket, which hung in the well. I mean, a, a nice poem. Like I, I really like the beginning screams really, Indiana to you, doesn't it? it? It does. I mean, I'm picturing a field with a well and like a little farm and I, okay. 1817. Cause I'm picturing like an old pickup truck, like, 
being being that I'm actually you know what's coming to mind is that scene in Armageddon when uh uh Ben Affleck and um Liv Tyler are doing the animal cracker thing and like, yes like, like that's what is in my mind right now is the animal cracker scene from Armageddon like I, I'm pretty sure that wasn't in Indiana but like Indiana vibes like you know just sitting out in a field with your girlfriend, you know, maybe a ball of Boone's Farms, making some, working on your night moves. Yes. And, and before you ask, um, the, the poet, which you would assume, uh, because the, the, the bucket was created um, and, and chosen because of this poem, uh, he is not from Indiana. Oh, so no. this is the decision makers, which I will get into later, who decided on an old oaken bucket, um, thought that the poem uh, personified Indiana. So, hey, it works for me, man. It works for me. It's a lot about a bucket. I mean, that yeah. poem is like what, like eight, seven, eight lines, and half of it's about the bucket. Yeah. So, this bucket meant a lot to old Sammy, Sammy Woodworth, whenever he was a kid. That yes. Uh, fond memories of a bucket. And here's my question to you Have you ever been to Indy? Have you ever been to the state of Indiana? Ah, uh, no. Been to Illinois? Been to Iowa, saw some some dirt track racing, a little left hand turning out there. Ate a great pork tenderloin sandwich. Bought a twelve pack of Miller Lite uh, from the concession stand. It was for like six bucks. It was fantastic. Miller Lite, great tasting, less filling. Sponsor the pod. I love Miller Lite. I mean, we talked about this, but yes. anyways, unofficial, never been to Indiana, un unofficial anyways, sponsor. Let's please, clear this no, up. No, 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 that's that's a plea. That's no, please sponsor. Yes, that's a that's a plea. Uh, <laughs> that is that is not an actual sponsor. But, but coming back around to it, no, never been to Indiana. I, I've been to Indiana. Uh, my my mom used to live and my dad does now live on the west side of the state uh, in Michigan and Kalamazoo. And we used to drive down about an hour, hour and a half uh, to the border to an Amish town, Shipshawana. So that was, I've, I've been through Indiana multiple times, but yeah. actually going to Indiana, um, I, I had been to, to Shipshawana. So uh, I had not, I've never been to the campuses on of Purdue at West Lafayette or, or Bloomington in, um, in Indiana. That, I gotta say like Bloomington is definitely a place that I'd like to go because I, I picked, I'm picturing a very picturesque campus. I'm not sure if that's the case. And um like it just it seems cool like i'd like to see a basketball game when they're good um and i also hear like indy's a pretty like slept on nice little town like coming from pittsburgh like growing up in pittsburgh i feel like pittsburgh's got more recognition like over the past decade maybe for being like a cool city but i feel like indy is similar similarly that's a hard word to say when you drink a lot of whiskey uh, slept on town. So. Yeah, I, I know it's definitely a place that uh, when uh, I guess we haven't really talked about this, and I will try to keep my bias out until um, you know the the proper episodes. But I am a Michigan State Spartans fan, go and I'm, I'm hoping go white, and I'm hoping that uh, when they you know if they get back to Indy, um, I will be able to to catch a game. Um, although I did uh, the Big Ten did announce kind of off schedule here, but. Um, uh, announced that they are going to rotate the 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 Big Ten championship game uh, now around the country and not just always oh. have it in Indianapolis. Oh, so I think that has cool. some cool experiences potentially. You know, hopefully, uh, Indy, I, from what I heard is uh, and from what I hear is a really cool spot uh, for the game. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there, like the combines there every year, right? Like the FL combines there every year, and, and there's a lot of championship games. So there's got to be something in the city. It seems pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, they like um like breadsticks like that's a big thing which you know I, i'm all for that like what's better to soak up a little bit a little bit boost than some some cheesy breadsticks that's, that sounds fantastic sure all right let me hit you with the second second little yes. fun fact here fun fact number two so, fun fact number two the old oaken bucket was the second trophy game implemented by big 10 schools following the little brown jack now and that's why even though that this rivalry is played this year uh, it conflicts with other rivalry games, right? So, but because it's number two, that's why we said, okay, let's let's have this number two in the list. Correct. Second to come, out. okay. Yes. Yeah, so this game is usually played in the last regular season game of the year, and there were um, four uh, trophied games uh, naturally, right? It makes sense that they would save them for the end uh, when they're rivalry games. So we had to make some executive decisions on what game we're going to feature that week, uh, and this unfortunately was not one of them, but. 
because it was, like you said, the second um, Big Ten trophy game uh, implemented. We thought it would make sense to do uh, the second one. Uh, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, because we right. got some other good ones coming up for that week. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see if, uh, you know, we might have some egg on our face if Purdue, Indiana, ends up being a top <laughs> matchup at the end of the game yeah, yeah the, the but, mighty powerhouse well like we said Penix and, and indiana it's indiana should here. be good i don't know that purdue will be good enough to make that you know a prime time the matchup, mighty but, boiler makers yeah but we'll see um so the the third fun fact i have for you this game uh has been played every year since 1920 wow besides last year COVID. because of COVID. Oh, damn. so this is they one of from us they, so, COVID took the old oaken bucket th- when i talked last week about uh the michigan minnesota game not being a protected matchup uh which they do a lot more in basketball in the big 10 than they do in um in football where you only play your conference your your division excuse me um and then you have a few crossover games from the other division. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a protected game. Mm-hmm. So uh, because Indiana is in the East and Purdue is in the West, mm-hmm. okay. um, but it is the only protected game. And, but unfortunately the streak was broken last year because of COVID. So the, what would have been the hundredth anniversary of the game now will be this year instead of last year. Uh N- not the hundredth anniversary, no, because technically that's this... not how time works. Yeah, because the first one has to happen in 1920. So okay, so the hundredth match. Okay, it wasn't the first game. So let me clarify. 1920 was the first time. Um, from 1920 on was consecutive. Oh, gotcha. So okay, they played okay. prior to 1920, but they didn't play consecutively gotcha. until 1920. Okay, so they had a good, they had a good run, great they run good- of consecutive games. Yeah. Uh, and because it was protected, uh, they would have had that run continue beside, you know, the code uh, kind of messed that up. Got it. Um, and then, you know, the last little fun fact that I didn't know uh, until I did some research um, and Mike, if you scroll a little bit, you can have a little, you can see a little picture. Um, this trophy has a sister trophy Ooh. and the sister trophy is called the Manin Spike Trophy. And that is given to the winner of the women's volleyball game that is a cool between the two schools and this trophy is actually really really cool so first off like i I love volleyball like we're still in the midst of the olympics and um or well i guess when this comes out the olympics will be done but right now when at the time of recording we are in the midst of the olympics Uh, actually usa beach volleyball just one goal yeah women's first time since missy uh missy may and uh, carrie walsh trainer I, I believe that's her full name, Carrie Walsh Trainer. Yeah. Um, uh, they have won gold. Now USA Women's Volleyball wins gold again. I love I think watching. it might be Misty May Trainer. And Misty Carrie May Walsh. Trainer and Carrie Walsh. All right. Fair enough. There you go. There you go. Facts. Apologies. They're legends and super yes. fun to watch. And, Four golds. And yeah. I, I mean, incredible. And then Dahlhauser and Rogers were, were legends for the men's uh, beach volleyball. And, but yeah, I, I love watching, like, cause that is another sport that, like, it's, it's just, it's fun. Like I like yep. watching Top Gun. I, I don't like playing volleyball because I'm not that good. Oh, but like, I love well, it. Well, but I like watching it. people play that are really good. Like, and I'll, I'll play. I'm just not good. Like I, I'm not a touch guy. Like I, I play like <laughs> brute sports. You know, I don't have sure. the touch, but sure. like that is so to give, give, give the viewers uh, uh, an understanding of this. Yeah, the, please the, describe the modern it. spike trophy. It's really dope. So uh it has and i do know a little bit about the old oak and bucket like i remember seeing that so they chain and i'm sure we'll get more into this but like they they add there's a chain coming from uh both trophies with p's and i's for each school i i assume when they win each time they add a p or an i it's like a golden p or i like chained and the trophy itself is pretty sweet because it's like a big wooden or wooden or brick like it's, it's just a brick um and then there's a legit just like railroad spike golden railroad spike coming out of the top and then they have the chains for the p's and the eyes attached to the top of the spike it's really cool looking like i i think it's that is a cool ass trophy um i i love it like that's super fantastic and it definitely got me thinking about and and i kind of was thinking about this um you know as we were developing this podcast is 
obviously college football is well known for its trophies um, and its rivalry games. Obviously I know like ba- college basketball is known for its rivalries, but it made me think yeah, about yeah. like how many of those rivalries had trophies or how yeah. many rivalries exist. Um, how many heated rivalries that have some cool histories exist outside of, you know, men's yeah. basketball and men's football. Right. And uh, this is one of the, the ones apparently women's volleyball, obviously big 10 is very good. Penn state was winning national championships for like 10 straight years, which is crazy crazy yeah. because you would think that like the pac 12 schools would be like the best and maybe i'm stereotyping a bit but like california yeah. volleyball you know like pac 12 i think of the west coast and pac 12 i think of volleyball but yeah i mean penn state was a powerhouse in yeah. volleyball the men's too have a good squad and uh yeah i mean this is just a cool trophy it's and, very uh, it's very cool I was, I was glad that i stumbled upon this i'm sure there's other trophies um please let us know if you if you know a, another yeah. trophy uh, yeah. that maybe your alma mater or team you root for uh has outside of football men's football men's basketball um let us know this was yeah. a really cool one um, I, I, I like this one a lot this is really really neat yeah all right so uh so let's get your first impressions on what the uh the old oaken bucket looks like yeah. here before so, we get so into this it. is definitely one that i've seen before from you know watching college football and everything and it's it's very similar as i mentioned there's there's that chain where we have the p's and the i's attached to it and it's it's a cool bucket like when you think of like a, a bucket in like a pirates movie that potentially has like gold in it like that's what it looks like it's a golden bucket or it's a wooden bucket with like the gold or brass uh you know rings on it there's an i and a p hanging from the handle which i didn't quite remember that but what stands out to me is the p's and the i's and the chain i think that that's just like really cool uh, I, I think it looks neat. I think it's cool to, that you get to add one every year. Are they are, are they like inscribed at all? Like I think that would be like with the year and the score, of the P's and the I's, or is it just added? they are? Oh, they are. Yes. That's cool. That's really awesome. I yep. I wasn't sure. About the year that. and the score is 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 inscribed um, on the uh, the the letters. That cool. is yeah, that's dope. That's this is actually one that I wasn't very familiar with. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't know about it. And I think, and that's just coming from a fan of a Big Ten um school, but uh I think unfortunately it's because you know, neither team are really known for football. They're they're definitely basketball schools, which is crazy considered basketball this is schools. A cool tra- they, that's true. They are they are basketball schools, but this is a cool ass trophy, like. Mm-hmm. I, I really dig it. I it, like the concept is just so cool. Like anytime you can like add something like that instead of just like with the little brown jug, they just wrote it on it. But like adding this in, I think that's dope. Now, do they like, I might be anticipating you a little bit here at this question, but like, do they add, uh, like, I assume that, you know, that this game's been played over a hundred times. So like there's not a hundred P's and I's all chained together in that bucket. Right. Yes. Yes. No, 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 no. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. I was going to say that bucket doesn't look as big, <laughs> like the size of it too. Like t- it talk is, a little bit about the size. Yes. It's not. Uh, so that's actually something I was not able to get an exact size on it, but it is, it is much, uh, it, it's smaller than it's um, tiny. it is. It's, it's, it's smaller, uh, might be or a similar size of the jug. I want to say it's only about 16 inches tall. It, it's, it's a small, it's one of yeah. the smaller trophies. Yeah. So the, the, um, the the belt you know for lack of better terms of the i's and p's um is long it's very long yeah. in comparison to the actual size of the bucket do they retain that belt of the i's and the p's somewhere like the old like when they take out the old because that's what they do with like the stanley cup like yes. when they run out of room they take the ring off and they display it in the hall of fame right? yes so. yes yes they do keep them i'm not exactly sure I don't think the exact amount that they'll keep, I want to say it's around like 50 or so uh, before they have to replace them where it gets too long. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even thinking 50, like yeah. that's a small, like, it, it's actually more than you'd think that they keep on there, but yeah. it's, it's not all of them. Which I mean, it's bucket. It's not a barrel. If it was the old oak and barrel, right. you could put all of them in there, but you know, that would also <laughs> hoisting it up and just be aw- more awkward to hoist. And then you dump all the I's and P's everywhere. And you got to put them back. It's a whole, it'd be a whole thing. Yes. 
Yeah, it, it definitely would be. It almost reminds, now that we're thinking about this, it almost reminds me of, uh, was it Monkeys in a Barrel? <laughs> Is that yes, what it is? Yeah, yeah the old barrel tra- monkeys. Barrel monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Was, that's yeah, now I'm thinking kid. about like Toy Story and the little <laughs> barrel monkeys. Yeah, that's exactly what it. That's kind of what it looks like. Just lies in peace. All right. Well, let, let me get us back on track here. So why don't I uh, talk a little bit about the history of the rivalry? Itself. Fire away, my man. All right. So the first matchup was in 1891. Uh, Purdue won that game 60 to nothing. Wow. Yes. And that started 1891. See, see, that's the crazy thing about these scores. Like, yeah. and we saw it in the last episode too, like in the turn of the century at the night in the 20th century, it was either you're winning 72 to nothing or 60 to nothing, or it's like seven to six. Yeah. Like, I, I really think what it came down to is you had schools that had like real athletes and then you, they were playing against <laughs> schools that like, just threw players in there purdue a notorious school for for athletes it was back back in the day apparently so this uh 60 to nothing win started a six game winning streak uh between the two schools that saw purdue score uh, a six game winning streak for purdue between these schools and it saw them score 60 in the first at least 60 points in the first three games damn so they won six in a row and they scored at least 60 in the first Just three running them off the field yes the woodshed. yes Jeez. and that kind of gets to the the broader point that the overall series purdue holds the lead with 76 wins to 42 losses and six ties i would not expect that yes i would have thought it'd be reversed. it has been a predominantly uh dominated I by guess, purdue yeah but i guess i think back that makes i'm trying to think of like purdue uh, obviously you have like your drew Brees and stuff yeah, like that indiana's and, football program has not traditionally been the focus of the school right I with guess, indiana yeah. basketball being and who's your basketball being the focus yeah yeah so yeah. but i will say as we kind of alluded to at the beginning of the the pod episode here um indiana has won six out of the last ten so oh, yeah, they've yeah. had definitely resurgence and arguably some of the best teams in school history most recently. Right, right. All right. Well, then let's uh, let's just segue right here into the history of the trophy itself. Uh, so the inaugural game uh, for this trophy was played on November 22nd in 1925. OK, so long, 35 years ish before the trophy came along. Yes. So, what was life like in 1925? You I, I, tell me about it. Okay, meta, let, meta. Let, let me just let me just hit you with it. Uh, some some things that were happening in the United States in 1925. Love it. I Love like it. this little segment. I, right? I do, I do. Yeah. Fun fact. Let's just stay with the World Series here. Yeah, we talked about it last time. Do you want to know who Otis won the World Wagner Series in 1925? I do. I do want to know who won the World Series in 1925. The Pittsburgh. Let's go, Pirates. Let's go. Defeated the Washington Senators. Screw them. Four games to three to win the Pirates' second World Series title. Love it. Love it. Let's uh, go, Bucks. Okay, Nellie Taylor Ross became the uh, governor of Wyoming. And she was the first female governor in the United States. Good for Nellie. Yes. Let's hear it for Nellie. Yes. That a girl. That and a babe. 12 days later, Miriam A. Ferguson became the first governor of Texas. Hey. First female governor of Texas. Let's go. Nellie yeah. and Miriam. 1925, a year of, of, of two women governors. I love it. And of love Texas, that. which is, you know, kind of surprising considering how conservative that is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. a little surprising. Yeah. That's but very, very cool. Nonetheless. Uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald published hey. The Great Gatsby. Oh, well, hey, just also no offense to, to Texas. Not saying you're a bunch of misogynists. You guys are great people. Love Texas. Great, great Texas. Love great Matthew game. McConaughey. Love. Oh, that's a whole. Is Texas football right back? Question oh, mark. Gosh, that's that's a whole series. That's Whiskers and Whiskeys present. Is Texas football? Are back? they setting themselves up to never be back by going to the SEC? <laughs> That's <laughs> it is also another separate. That's really going to test my love for Texas because <laughs> if they beat Alabama, I'll just if be, they're if they're back at the I'll end of Saban's tenure. Oh my god! <laughs> um, also, uh, the University of Miami was chartered in Coral Gables, uh, Florida, in, in 1925. 1925. Yes, I thought they were older than that, but mm-hmm. all right, fair enough. Fair enough. In Coral Gables, I'm not sure if they were potentially a school prior that wasn't in their 
current home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they could have been placed somewhere else um, prior to um, being chartering Coral Gables. And that, that's another sort seven, four crew and in, in the Miami team there. I mean, talk about football program. That's again, another story for another pod. Yes. So here, here's a nice little guessing game for you. Don't, mm-hmm. don't cheat. Don't mm-hmm. cheat here. The national football league added five teams in 1925. Wow. Now two of those teams one of the teams is currently still a team two of them were including that so one other team was a city that has currently an nfl team but it wasn't named the same thing Mm -hmm. and then the other three are cities that do not have nfl teams anymore (sighs) can you name give me the team that is still an nfl team big media market huge one of the biggest new york jets new york Giants. giants okay okay uh, the second team is a team that has a football team now, but, but is not Houston Oilers. No, it is it? one that is near and dear to my heart. The Detroit Detroit Panthers. Okay. All Detroit right. Panthers. Okay. I didn't even know that they're the Panthers and three that don't have teams anymore. Yep. Ah, uh, gosh. I'm going to say like Birmingham. Did they ever have a team? No, I will give you the regions. One okay. is in Ohio. Okay. One is Mm, yeah ohio's um, columbus no akron nope where the hall of fame is played can oh okay that makes yes, sense yeah. the canton bulldogs oh okay all right okay another one is an eastern city uh near uh the pittsburgh rivals so it's near philly <sighs> i know philly do you know where um Chris's uncle. No, I'm going to guess like Scranton. Pottsville. Pots, Pottsville had an NFL team? Pottsville Maroons. Shout out Taco, by the way. Shout out Chris Mandy, our good friend. Yes, he will be uh, in on a, a later episode. Can't wait. And then the last one is a New England city that does not have any professional oh, teams. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, shoot. It uh, is a capital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Providence. Yes. Yeah. Providence Steamroller. Yeah, I actually, I knew that. I actually, yeah, yeah, I would not be able to say it, but something in my brain, like Providence Steamroller, like kicked over a synapse, like something in my brain kicked over a synapse and it's firing now. It's like sparking. So, yeah. All right. uh, The first national spelling bee. Who? happened in 1925 what a tradition and the, la- and the last uh last noteworthy thing this will really set the tone for what okay. uh where america was in 1925 so in dayton tennessee a high school te- science teacher by the name of john t scopes was accused of teaching evolution mm. and was found guilty in violation of tennessee state law oh at yeah the time. yeah yeah and he was ultimately fined a hundred dollars <sighs> Which was probably closer to what a thousand or so. Yeah, it's for just, teaching evolution. It's just, it's, he was a young uh, gun, silly guy. What's crazy too is like that's less than a hundred years ago. Yeah, like can you imagine yep. what like people are back? Like, can you imagine what they did in twenty twenty one? Yeah. Yep. All right, so uh, getting uh, getting back on track here to to the history of the trophy. Uh, the idea of having the trophy to play for it came in 1925 uh, when the Chicago alumni clubs of both universities of Indiana and Purdue uh, decided to, in quotes, discuss the possibility of undertaking worthy joint enterprises on behalf of the two schools. Fair unquote. enough. Makes sense. Yes. So they, they, uh, they tasked two alum, uh, Dr. Clarence Jones of Indiana and Russell Gray of Purdue, Uh, to find a suitable trophy to represent the rivalry between the two schools. What? How they got to a bucket. And they chose, because of that wonderful poem, poem, an old oaken bucket. So they went on a search. They decided that an old oaken bucket would, would... how would represent the rivalry and in, and Indiana as a whole? How? <laughs> Indiana as a whole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could they have gone with like a race car? That would what have been pretty cool. What in the world is happening? A bucket. <laughs> Who are we as a state? We're a bucket. An old oaken bucket. <laughs> so they went. Uh, 
could just, I could just imagine sitting on the board of the alumni committee. All right, doctor and doctor, what did you guys come up with to represent our state in the rivalry? Uh, they came up with a bucket, an old oak. <laughs> an old bucket. <laughs> what? I would just be like, come again. <laughs> That's the best you could come up with. I mean, that the was poem, the best. When you listen to the poem, it's a nice poem, but like, what kind of childhood did this kid have? He's like, you know what? Lots of good times with that bucket. I keep going back to that bucket. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, uh, this is my ignorance of history, but I'm not sure whether we had city water. If well, water <laughs> was just, you know, something that was, you know, just predominant. The whole here state and- represented by a bucket. Yes. So they uh, they went on this journey to find a suitable old oaken bucket, and that landed them they represent their state on on the Brunner family farm. And they, I, I hope I'm saying that correct. Hold on, Brunner. hold on. You think that like they just like <laughs> you know how in school sometimes you had an assignment and it's like okay class we're gonna have the science fair in two months put your project together and then you just you just wake up the day before and you're like oh no it's due today my assignment's due today i had two months i did nothing (laughs) these guys are like oh no like they i mean it's 1925 so i guess they called it operator switchboard call dr uh dr potts <laughs> hey man did you come up with anything no oh no and then just reading through the paper maybe this poems in there it's like fuck it boom and they're just sweating bullets in the boardroom it's just like fuck it i see <laughs> Listen, maybe it just came down to, you know, they were at a, a, you know, a local watering hole and they were drinking. Maybe it's just thought of uh, a barrel, but like similar to you said, where the heck are we going to come up with a barrel? No, we'll just, uh, we'll it, just get a bucket. It had to be. They forgot everything. They forgot about it. this is a total case. Been there, done that. Forgot the assignment was due. Bucket. And it, it worked. They're like, well, these guys have PhDs. So there you uh, go. So. Uh, they, they went on this quest and they, they ended up landing on a, a suitable bucket. Um, and it was on the, the, <laughs> sorry, <God. laughs> can you just imagine they get in the car? Like, I can't believe they went for that. Well, now we got to find a bucket. Where are we going to get a bucket from? So they just went from farm to farm to find a bucket. They did. Oh my God. So they, they they landed on the the Brunner, like I said, I, I hope I'm saying this right, the Brunner family farm. Uh, and that was found in between the southeastern cities of Kent and Hanover. Just scouring farm after farm. Hey, can we see your bucket? What kind of buckets you have around? Uh, no, that's a barrel. That's we I listen. This is this is what probably bucket. sweetened the pot here. As legend has it, the bucket was used by a Civil War general oh my God. before being retired to drawing water, uh, just from the family's opening well. <laughs> they they've visited two dozen farms, not nary a bucket in sight. Who would have thought two dozen farms, no bucket? They come up on this next farm, the Brunner farm. <laughs> Listen, do you guys, have, we came all the way from Chicago. Do you have a bucket? Sir, not only do I have a bucket, this is a magical bucket. Go on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is a historical bucket. Oh my gosh. So apparently oh. the family did not need such bucket and they gave it to them. And so the two wait, brought wait, wait. the bucket back with them and restored it. This is 1925. They've been keeping this Civil War bucket for years now Mm -hmm. and they're like you know what like obviously they've been keeping it for a reason like it has to have some sort of historical value yeah this is (laughs) we've been waiting for this i can see the the father of the household telling the wife like i told you i told you that bucket would pay off i told you we weren't gonna sell in the yard sale i told you yes Oh my gosh. So, uh, like we kind of had talked about, in accordance with the Chicago Alumni Organization's resolution, the winner of the bucket gets to put a P or an I link added to the chain of the bucket, and that will uh, include the score, the date, and the city uh, where the game was played that's engraved on it. 
and which is sweet yes and ironically the 1920 game ended in a tie so the very first link which is on top of that bucket is oh, an i and a p i was wondering together. what that was for okay yes. yeah because there is at the handle at the top there's an i and a p together so that's for the tie so i guess yes. anytime there's a tie it would, we'll it would be, be both but now with you know most modern day yeah, college football game, you yeah. you have overtime right, so right, you're not right, finishing right, but right. that game so it's kind of a pretty cool way to start it off with both teams getting to put their letter at the that top. is cool that's cool and uh if if you scroll down mike to the very first picture um you'll see that's one of the original pictures there oh, of gosh. them christening it which it was being christened at the opening of uh indiana's uh stadium that year um, this guy's holding the bucket like i can't believe they went for this yep. i can't believe they went for a bucket idea <laughs> okay so stop scrolling okay but but we're gonna have you scroll down now so so ladies and gentlemen uh i i, I i've been talking this this next part off uh to to mike for a while i really think he's going to be jazzed up about this next fact um so let's let's get into kind of so like i had mentioned the the in the uh, rivalry had been dominated predominantly by Purdue and Indiana was struggling and that struggle really went on and, and, and they kind of lost the flair of wanting that rivalry trophy because it just had been um, won by Purdue so much that it really didn't mean much. Uh, it wasn't right. much of a rivalry right. for many, many you years. You the stupid bucket every year. Until, until the 1970s when a coach got hired at Indiana that would be, would be, um, referenced as the the reason why the rivalry rekindled and put some respect on indiana's name and that man the sunshine scooter himself is is coach lee corso let's go lee corso is is considered uh the savior and uh that really brought indiana back and really brought an extra fire to the rivalry look at that picture of coach man. i know he looks Good, Doesn't he look dude. great? He looks really good. Full head of hair. I know. I mean, I guess he still does have full head of hair, but the houndstooth couch he's sitting on is glorious. Just holding the bucket there. Oh, man. Sunshine Skier looks good there. So when Corso took over as head coach in 1973, Indiana had lost 21 out of the last 25 matchups Jeez. against Purdue. The bucket wasn't even brought to one of Corso's first rivalry games because it was assumed that Indiana would lose. Oh my God. They wouldn't, they, Purdue didn't even bring the bucket. <laughs> what a flex. <laughs> what a flex. So, so what did that man do? Oh, that man. I think we know. So later, Corso was a part of back to back bucket victories in 1976 and 1977, making it the first winning streak for Indiana over Purdue in 30 years. And like I had mentioned, many attribute Corso with reigniting excitement for the rivalry. So Corso, just to give you a little bit of, of headspace on him when it comes to this rivalry, he had a sign above his door that read, quote, we, ha we have you done, what have you done to beat Purdue? Question mark. Love it. He had that sign Love over it. his office. He was pumped about a lot it. Of, a lot of teams do that now. Right. Like Michigan does that with Ohio State, right? Yeah. 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 Well, that's not going too well for them, but they and, don't have such a scooter at them. Right. And, you know, and, and in that rivalry in particular, you have, they, they don't use each other's words. Like they won't, they won't reference the school, you know, it's a school, you know, up North and the school, you know, down below. But, um, so course also after every uh, practice they finished, they would finish it with a yell of beat Purdue. It didn't matter how early in the season it was. It didn't matter if they were playing Minnesota. It was always beat Purdue yeah. at the end of every yeah, yeah, practice. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was definitely a, yeah. a big deal. And former players said it was a 365 day thing for coach Corso. Love that. So after Corso won the, the bucket for the first time, he brought it home and stuck with it. In his bed. <laughs> yeah, I hope he kicked his wife out. Like get the, it's me in the bucket tonight, babe. Yep. <laughs> Another time the bucket was filled with flowers and used as a centerpiece for Corso's family. Uh, oh my Thanksgiving gosh. Feast. What a flex. He turned the bucket into a cornucopia. I mean, I, I love if, if you watch college football, like, you know, uh, like obviously after he has stroke, like things have kind of gone downhill for him from an announcing perspective on game day. But like, if you love college football as much as EJ and I do, like you're like the best part of your year, the best Saturdays start with Lee Corso and the crew on college game day. It's, it's just, it's 
a show unlike any other. It's so much fun. And Corso is just, he's a character, man. Like he's, mm-hmm. he's the best. Like people think he needs to hang up the cleats just cause he, but like really he's, he's fantastic. And I think I, he does such a good job. I think, I think, uh, I mean, he's, he's an icon. He's an institution. And I think he's earned the right to go out when he, he can know, do whatever he wants when, when he wants yeah. to. So, yeah, so it was, uh, it was very cool. Um, so even after Corso left in, in, uh, Indiana in 1982, the passion, uh, still continued. So, uh, it was just an example of that. And, uh, excuse my language. If, if anyone Uh-oh. has, uh, anyone has a kid that's listening here, Uh-oh. You know, this is a family friendly podcast, but it's not going to be. be. Uh, So in 1993, Indiana safety Chris Dwyer delivered a scornful message about Purdue ahead of the uh, of that upcoming game. He said, in quote, they're all cocksuckers. (laughs) Their coach is a cocksucker. What the fuck is a Boilermaker anyway? I hate that town, too. (laughs) I love it. Boilermaker is a good drink. I mean, that's, we should think, we, oh, we should have had Boilermakers. Oh, uh, after this pod, we're uh, going to drink a Boilermaker. I'll and we're going to let right you guys now. know. About yeah, it. we'll let you know how, we'll, we'll play on Instagram. We'll, we'll Instagram live the, uh, the Boilermaker. That was a huge mess. Oh, that was missed. Well, it's all right. When we post it, we'll do Boilermakers when we'll post it. That's fine. That is, I mean, that's fantastic. Is the safety that said that? Yep. Too? Well, and, and Indiana won that game 24 to 17. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like that even more now. I like that quote even more. Yeah. So, uh, and then if you, you look at the last picture uh, we have here, and again, we'll post this on there. It's a pretty cool picture, and and it's uh, it's of the the descendants of the original Brunner family. Um, and oh my gosh, uh, these are brownies. <laughs> yes, and in the in the middle is uh, Mark Deal, and he was a quarterback for uh, Corso back um, in the seventies, and now he right. is uh, works for Indiana's football program and is uh, considered the keeper of the bucket when Indiana has it. So it's a picture of him standing in the middle of the the Brunners as of now, and that's on top of the uh, well that was where the original bucket. Um, where that bucket was originally taken from, which is pretty cool. I just can't believe they landed on a bucket. Like, and that's been a thing. I mean, it, it it's like the chain is definitely the coolest thing about the bucket. Yeah. Like that that's sweet. <laughs> just the story of how they got to it. Unbelievable. But uh yeah, like I kind of mentioned, well, why don't we get into it right now? Let's uh let's let's get to our rankings here uh, on on the old open bucket here. Yeah. So uh again, just a reminder, we're ranking it on looks, uh the history. Uh, the rivalry itself, and then we'll kind of um, put it in, in a tier. So, Mike, what, what do you think as far as looks go? Yeah, I mean, it's a bucket. <laughs> Hearing about how they came up with the bucket is so dumb. But I I do love, like, the chain, like, adding that the P's and the I's with the inscription. I think that's cool. Uh, I'm going to oh, – gosh, I gave the little brown jug a four. I guess I'm going to give the bucket a four too. Cause like, I, I mean, I do like, again, this comes back to like, I like trophies that are just stupid things like, like, like meaningless things, except for the fact that they have meaning to, to these people. Hmm. So I think it's a four for me. Okay. I, I love the, the, the bell. I think it's fantastic. The story just couldn't be beat. Like that's fantastic. So I, I think, um, it is also a four. That's where I have it. Uh, I think I like what it looks like more um, than the little brown jug. And I think a, a lot of that is the links. I think the chain and the yeah, link yeah. And, and, and engraving uh, the links. I think that's a, that's a very cool um, way to, to show the various victories. And it's very unique. Most, most trophies just like, you know, either write on it or have, you know, a plaque that has, you know, just the typical, um, you know, engraved dates and stuff like that, but to have the links. Is right, cool. right. What about history? Oh my gosh. Like, I mean, can I give like a negative score to this? Sure. Like these guys just turned in an assignment at yeah. the last minute. Yeah. I mean, like that, that's just dumb. That's a one like that. They literally uh, two, you know what? I change it too. Cause I do like the poem and, and the fact that they like, I, I'm going to give a point for trying because yeah. like they definitely, last minute turned this assignment in and it worked and it has worked continually. So two, I will give it a two and a half to 0.5. Um, and, and I agree with you. I think, I think the, I think it's 
what kept it from not being like a zero is the fact that they at least thought like that's what they felt like Indiana felt like to them. And uh, what am I to say that, you know, I'm not from Indiana. Um, who am I to say that it's not what, you know, an old oak and bucket isn't, you know, uh, representable for Indiana, but it, it, for them to just kind of come up in an alumni meeting and decide, okay, yeah. we should have a trophy and, and we're going to enact this, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's not one of the better, no, better stories. No, no. Uh, and then the rivalry itself. If not for uh, Lee Corso, this would be a zero. Yeah. Uh, just because I really don't, like I said, I'll watch a college football game that's on, but like <clears throat> Indiana Purdue is not appointment television for me. So it's a one. Okay. See, I'm going to go opposite. I'm going to go three and a half. Okay. Because I like, after a reading a lot of this, there. yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mushy fine. thing. That's it's like, fine. it's, it's really pushing on top tier for me because I, I love how the Corso really reignited the rivalry. And I love that Indiana recently has made it much more of a game. And it, it seems like this trophy and maybe I'm, you know, misunderstanding and, and some Purdue or Indiana alums would disagree, but I feel like it, it means a little bit of something to win this, uh, especially because they're in-state rivals. I, I definitely so see I think that. I yeah. like the in-state rival That's part true. of it. The in-state piece, see, now you're thinking, like, I want to rethink my score, but I want to stay with the one just because, like, I mean, it is India football. If it was basketball, it would mean more. Uh, I'm sure that, like, there is a lot of hatred between those schools, like, especially being in-state. And we've seen, you know, with the Spike Trophy, like, clearly it goes over to to all sports as well. Um, But just, I mean, from what I'm getting on the football field these days and the fact – especially if it was more competitive, the fact that like Purdue's consistently wax their butts. Yep. Um, you know, for, yeah, I, I'm going to keep it at one and, and overall uh, I'm going to put, what were we going like high, medium, low, yep. low tier. I mean, I'm going to say it's low tier. Like it's, but like caveat that like it's a low tier rivalry, but like it's a cool story. Like it's, sure. it's fun. If those teams get good, it'll be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And it's as, I do, you know, obviously I really do like the trophy. Like I, I gave it a four, um, but we both gave it four. It's actually, yeah. but it's just not something like in the grand scheme of things, it, it doesn't just mean a whole lot. So that, yeah. for that reason, I'm going to, I'm going to put it low. I'm going to, I'm going to put it for me. I think it's a mid tier, but it's really pushing on top tier for me. I'm going to oh. keep it at a mid. I, I just, I, I, I really, and, and maybe this is just, my prejudice because I, you know, I have a snapshot of what's to come. Um, but I, I do think, I do think we're going to find trophies that are much lamer, unfortunately than this. Mm. And I, I, I think it's almost there. I really, I really like the uniqueness of that bucket and those links. But. I, that, that, I mean, it's a cool point, but like, like I said, it's like, me sure. and Purdue. like I, sure. I just, doesn't blow my skirt up. So just a reminder, this game is going to actually be played on uh, November 27th. Uh, we'll remind you guys ahead of time and we'll try and um, schedule out. So we'll give you guys the times and and uh, the channels that they're on. But uh, this one's definitely, you know, like we had mentioned uh, in the future. Um, but yeah, so I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, again, check out our Instagram at whiskers.whiskies. And uh, I also want to give a shout out to my uh, sister, Shay. Tom shout Sutt. out, Shay. Shay. Uh, she uh, created our amazing logo. Um, and we will, um, if you're interested in seeing more of her artwork or want to, um, you know, use her for an upcoming project, we will um, put in our bio some links on how to get on and get in contact with her. Um, so join us next week as we delve into an underrated rivalry, I believe and trophy and that is the land of lincoln trophy for mike i'm ej bottoms up cheers boys